In 1949, Dr. Wakatsuki became the first Japanese surgeon to successfully operate on a patient for spinal caries. It evoked a tremendous reaction in the Japan Surgical Society, in which it had been traditionally considered inadvisable to surgically treat this ailment. Poverty and overwork were primarily responsible for its occurrence. An attempt is being made here to corroboratively verify survey findings in an animal test. As their limbs were overburdened, farm workers would often suffer from tender vaginitis and inflammation of a tendon and its sheath. With the limbs of a rabbit kept in the water, an experiment is conducted on Hiesho, or a syndrome stemming from the cold, which farm workers had to put up with while working in the painfully cold paddy fields. In this experiment, a freezer is used to cast light on the effects of a house with absolutely no heating system whatever on man's health. Here, a German shepherd is seen caged next to a rabbit in an experiment designed to check and see how the rabbit's internal organs will be adversely affected by the stress. The object is to gain an idea of the degree to which the housewife's health will be adversely affected when she tries to justify her routine behavior and lifestyle before her mother-in-law in a feudalistic family. With all sorts of experiments, surveys and researches done, Dr. Wakatsuki came to realize that there was a widespread prevalence of symptoms of a sort which was traditionally peculiar to Japanese farmers. He named them Norfusho, or the Japanese Farmer's Syndrome. In an attempt to stamp out Norfusho, Dr. Wakatsuki felt it absolutely necessary to establish an entirely new milieu of medical science which would feature an elaborate blending of preventive medicine and social science. The health-oriented science thus established was named rural medicine. It is now accepted that Norfusho was a series of premonitory symptoms of what we know today as Seikatsu Shukan Byo, or lifestyle induced diseases, or Seijin Byo, ailments progressively degenerative over time. The Japanese Association of Rural Medicine was established in 1952. In no way is rural medicine learning for learning's sake. It is a science designed specifically to protect the lives of farm workers. This science must always sustain itself in line with humanism and democracy. Unite all people who are determined to devote themselves to the delivery of health and medical care to rural populations. The Saku Central Hospital holds an annual open house festival on the same day as Komansai, the town's traditional silkworm festival. On this particular day, the hospital's facilities were crowded with townspeople and visitors from other communities. The hospital's festival might well be described as a novel type of exhibition on health and disease. The idea is to provide visitors with information put together in plain language, both on panels and in question and answer sessions, in attempts to encourage visitors to renew their determination to protect their own health. In previous festivals, all displays were prepared and the briefings made by specialists on the hospital staff, and this approach remains unchanged. This system of calisthenics was worked out by the hospital staff long ago, and a demonstration is still held at each year's hospital festival. The hospital staff are unsparing of themselves in stepping up interchanges with local residents. Here they all get together in singing the hospital songs, together with farmers and caravan health screening team.
The delivery of medical care in hamlets without physicians eventually gave rise to requests to the hospital. Couldn't the health checkup be performed on a regular basis? Couldn't it cover all villagers, not just those who wanted to undergo it? As a result, the idea developed of working out an all-inclusive healthcare system in which the hospital would cover all villagers in a series of annual checkups. The first such screening was performed in the village of Yachiho, 10 kilometers south of the hospital in 1959 and covered every one of the villagers. All staff members of the hospital involved themselves in this project. They give themselves unsparingly, keenly aware of the need to teach everyone. The screening begins first with an interview on health, lifestyle and environment. It is followed by the measurement of height and weight, a urine test, the measurement of blood pressure, and a medical examination. Then local public health nurses give counselling and advice on health and nutrition. It might be said that the basic ingredients of today's sophisticated health screening programme can be traced back to what the hospital staff worked out in those years. On the basis of the findings of the health screenings, the hospital's healthcare department designed a health pocketbook in which each examinee can make entries on his or her health condition. Some days after a mass screening, the hospital staff customarily hold a meeting in each hamlet to report about the findings and give a briefing both to the examinees and their group as a whole on how to promote good health. It was decided that each community should nominate health guidance committee men from among its residents who would meet to discuss all aspects of health care on a regular basis. Thus it could be successfully corroborated through the involvement of villagers that prevention is better than cure. This scene was filmed in 1967. Structural reforms in the economic and technological sectors began to spread across the world in the 60s, compelling Japanese agriculture to undergo drastic changes as well. Above all, the use of newly developed pesticide spread and enabled farmers to produce enormous crops. Yet in another aspect, there was an alarmingly sharp rise in the number of farmers poisoned with pesticides, and the complaints they suffered from differed widely. Naturally, physicians were compelled to do something about this unwanted new development. Instead of waiting for the visit of afflicted farmers, the hospital hastily formed a team of specialists which would be sent out to administer first aid on the spot. Here, the hospital put into effect the findings of corroborative studies and experiments the hospital had accumulated in their endeavor to combat Norfolkshaw. A greater amount of residual mercury is detected from the hair of neonates than from that of their mothers, leading the hospital staff to suspect that organic mercury used as a pesticide might be accumulated in fetuses. A monkey is used in this particular experiment on chronic organic mercury poisoning. Attempts were made to cast light on the symptoms detected in the monkey while checking them against the symptoms peculiar to Minamata disease. Young men in rural communities were increasingly lured into big cities, leaving farm work in the hands of their wives and elderly parents. Then completely new types of farm machinery came out 
raising the incidence of unprecedented types of fatigue and injury. These developments became a new theme for rural medicine. At the 4th International Congress of Rural Medicine held at the Saku Central Hospital in 1969, pesticide poisoning and injuries caused by large-sized farm machinery were taken up as main themes. And, uh, I, I really enjoyed this. Participants from the Asian region focused their attention particularly on contagious diseases, parasites, malnutrition and villages without physicians. At this congress, Japan served to foster ties of scientific collaboration between Asia and Europe. This endeavor was strongly supported by people in the Saku district for which the Saku Central Hospital served as the medical care complex. The number of Asian, African and Latin American visitors wishing to know about and learn at the Saku Central Hospital has increased year by year. They are conducted to the village where the hospital's mass health screening is currently underway. Recently, the hospital has dispatched a physician to Africa to do field work on temporary duty. The network of agricultural medicine and rural health is fanning out across the world. The most significant problems posed in the 1980s were depopulation and aging in rural areas. In the dramas now put on by the hospital's troupe, greater emphasis is put on new approaches to health problems in an ever-changing rural setting than on the dissemination of thoughts about health and hygiene as in the early years. The delivery of medical care cannot be taken into account without taking account of local cultural activities. The time has come when the hospital has to work out new approaches in a constantly changing society. <laughs> 